I'm going to show you how to create the Apple Vision Pro's UI for the MetaQuest. This works with the Quest 2 and doesn't require eye tracking, as we will be using a pointer to interact with the UI. Apple's UI has been praised for having really good designs and for looking great, so this can be useful whether it's for a side project or to prototype a certain UI design for your VR application. If you want to learn how to make this, stick around until the end. Before we get started, if you're interested in VR development, we have created a VR UI package that contains 30 plus ready to use UI assets for your VR application. This can take designing the UI for your VR application or project from weeks to hours. Our asset is on the Unity Asset Store and has a setup video guide and support documents to help you get started in under 10 minutes. If you'd like to check it out and support us, the link is in the description. Now back to the video. So the first thing we want to do is create a new project and I'm using Unity 2022.3.5. I'm going to call it AVP UI tutorial and select the 3D template. And then from there, just click create project and wait for it to load. Now that we're in our project, the first thing that we want to do is set up our project for VR. So we need to adjust some settings by going to file, build settings, and then we want to switch to the Android platform for building for the meta quest. And then after that is done, we want to add our scene to the open scenes for the build. Then we want to go to the player settings. And then from there, we want to go to the XR plugin management and install XR plugin management. Once that is complete, we want to go and select Oculus for Android and also select Oculus for PC. And then we can go ahead and close the settings. And the next thing we need is the Oculus integration package. So we don't want to use the one on the asset store, which is version 55 because it has some bugs. We want to use version 53.1 and I'll put the link for it down in the description and you guys can download it. So once that is downloaded, you want to go to assets, import package, custom package, and then you want to select the package that you downloaded and just hit open. And then you can keep all of the files selected and hit import. And then you can select no for this. Don't send. No. Close. You want to upgrade. And then you want to hit restart. And you also want to choose yes and then restart again. And this is going to restart your project. Now that it's restarted, we can go ahead and set up our scene. So first thing we want to do is rename our scene from sample scene to main scene, just to clarify that this is our main scene that we're working on. And then after that, we want to change the environment a little bit to be more focused on the UI. So we're going to create a plane that's going to act as the floor beneath our UI. And we want to change the material of this plane to be something less intrusive. So we're going to go to materials, select and search for drop shadow and we're going to select this material and this is going to be kind of like a highlight or shadow under our ui so after that what we want to do is change the sky box and we're going to go to window rendering lighting environment and then skybox material look up skybox and choose skybox gradient this already looks better and we're going to have the focus be all on the UI instead of on the environment and having different colors. Okay, so next up, we want to go ahead and start adding our VR stuff. We're going to go and look up OVR camera rig, and this comes with Oculus integration. Drag it into our scene. And we want to put it at negative 2 for the Z axis, so it's behind our canvas a little bit. After that, we're going to go ahead and change the tracking origin type to floor level. And then we're going to go to our left hand and right hand anchors. And we're going to look up custom hand left and drag it under left hand anchor and custom hand right and drag that under the right hand anchor. Then we're going to delete our main camera because we don't need that. And we have a camera in the OVR camera rig. 
And then we're going to go and drag the UI helpers prefab into the scene, which is going to be the pointer that allows us to point at the UI. We're going to enable the line renderer on the laser pointer. And we're going to change the colors of the line renderer. So currently it is blue, but we want to change it to something that matches the environment. Just look up default line for the material, select that. And then for the color, we want to change the alpha of the beginning to zero. So we kind of have a gradient pointer. And then we are ready to go with the colors. We're going to go to our sphere and we're going to increase the size to 0 0.015 just so we can see a little bit more clearly. And then after that, we're going to go to our event system and we want to drag the custom hand right into the ray transform because the ray is going to come out of the right hand and we're going to choose secondary index trigger only for the controller joypad click button because that's the button that we want to use as the button to press stuff on the UI. Okay, and then we're going to go to UI and we're going to create our canvas, which is going to contain all of our UI elements. We're going to call it menu canvas. And then under the menu canvas, what we want to go ahead and do is go to components, remove the graphic ray caster and set the canvas screen render mode to world space. Recenter it at zero, 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 width to 1500, height to 800. And we want to change the scale of the canvas to 0 0.001, because otherwise it's going to be too big for our scene. Then we're going to add the OVR Raycaster component so we can interact with it, with it using the UI helpers. And we're going to drag the laser pointer into the pointer field. If we look at our main canvas, it's a bit underground, some of it. So we're going to put the Y to 1. And that should fix it. And now we should have it a little bit in front of our OVR camera rig at the right position. And that looks good. We are now ready to go ahead and start making the components inside of our canvas. So first thing I did was create a folder called AVP or Apple Vision Pro. And I imported some images. First of all, the background circles for our icons, and I'll provide those in the description. And I changed the texture type to Sprite 2D and UI. Other than that, I went and imported some icons for the apps. And unfortunately, I can't provide those for copyright reasons, but you can get your own or find those icons online. So after that, we're going to go to our menu canvas. And then from there, we want to add an empty object under it and call it main menu. And this is going to be the background with all of our icons in it. And we're going to change the width to 1500 and the height to 800. And then we want to do a few things. First thing we want to do is add a canvas group so we can treat the whole menu as one canvas. And then we're going to add a vertical layout group and we're going to set the spacing to 100 and the child alignment to upper center and uncheck everything on it. After that, we want to create kind of like rows in our main menu. And if you look at the Apple Vision Pro UI, you have kind of like three rows and each one of them has apps in it. So we're going to create an empty object, call it row one inside of our main menu, set the width of it to 1200, the height to 200. And then after that, we're going to add the component to it, which is going to be the horizontal layout group. And we're going to add a hundred for spacing and we can keep everything as is. Next, we're going to duplicate these rows. We're going to create two more. And we're going to rename them to row two and row three. For row two, we're going to set the width to 1500 because this one is going to contain five icons instead of four like row one and three. Next, inside of our row, we want to create another empty object and we're going to call this app icon. And this is going to be our app icon prefab. We're going to set the width and height of this app icon to 200 by 200. And then we're going to add a component to this, which is an image. And we're going to set the alpha to zero because 
this is just going to be added so we're able to click on it but we don't want this to be the main image of the icon and then we're going to add another empty object under it and we're going to call it background circle and then we're going to set it to stretch and set all of the fields to zero and we want to duplicate that and call the second object icon and this is going to contain the icon for the app and we're going to add an image to this one as well and we're going to add an image to background circle so first icon we want to recreate is the apple tv icon so we're just going to choose black for the background and then for the icon we're going to choose the mode of the positioning to the regular and we're just going to choose the icon to be 100 by 100 just so we can see it and then from there you could just adjust it until it looks good depending on the icon that you have and the size of it you can just keep playing with it until you find the one that looks the best okay that looks pretty good so we're going to go ahead and create a prefab out of this app icon so if we want to change something we don't have to change each icon individually and we could just change the prefab next up what we want to do is create the windows that are going to open when we click on our apps so we're going to create an empty object under the menu canvas and call it music window and then we're going to set the width to 2000 and we're going to set the height to 1200 and this is just going to be a sample window when we click on the music icon we're going to add an image component to it and I'm just going to select the image that I added to my project for simplicity reasons. I don't want to complicate this window. And then after that, we're going to uh, add a UI element to this, which is going to be a button and we're going to call it close button. And we're not going to import text mesh pro because we want to delete the text that's inside of it. And that's fine. And then we're going to set, the button width and height to 100 and then we're going to go in 2d mode just so we can edit it more easily and just move it to the top left corner of the window we're going to change the sprite to a close icon that we already have in the project and we're going to change the color to match the window after that what we're going to do is just duplicate this window and call the second one files window we're going to disable that one and then we're going to change the image prefab or the image sprite on this window to this files image that i got and change the width to 1200 and the height to 480 and then just move the close button around just so we can have it at the top left of this window after that, we're going to select both windows and add a canvas group to each so we can enable or disable everything under these windows. And there you have it. We now have the menu canvas and we just have to add the scripts so we can have the functionality of the menu. I'll provide these scripts in the description. Now that I've imported the three scripts, app icon, main controller and window controller, we're going to go ahead and add them to the components. So the menu canvas, we're going to add the main controller to it. And for the menu group, we want to drag the main menu into that. Next up, we have our app icon. We're going to go into the prefab itself. So we're going to go to the prefab, click on it, and then add the app icon script to this prefab. And then for the background, we're going to go ahead and drag the background circle inside of it. And then we're going to drag the icon into the icon and we can leave the app window for now. We'll assign that in the scene. So we're going to go back and then we'll assign the window after we create all the icons. So we'll leave it for now. Next up, we're going to go to our windows and let's go to the music window first and then select also the file window. And we want to add the window controller script to those. And then for each one of those, we want to go inside and we want to add the close button into the close button field. And then for the canvas group, you could just add the window itself because it already has a canvas group on it. So we did that for the music window and we're going to do the same 
for the files window, drag the close button and drag the window into the canvas. Next up, we're going to go ahead and duplicate all of our icons and we're just going to assign the images to them. And I'm going to fast forward through this because it takes some time and I'll see you on the other end of this. All right, now that we're back, we want to just assign the windows to a couple of the apps. So let's go to the second app, which is the music icon. And we're going to add the music window to the app window field. So just drag the music window into there. And then we're going to go to the one after that, which is the file icon and drag the files window. And the rest are not going to do anything when we click on them. So you could add more windows if you want in your demo, but for now, we'll just have these two. So there you have it. We have our canvas ready to go and we're ready to build and test our Apple Vision Pro UI in the headset. See how it looks. Lastly, as a bonus tip, if you want to build, go to build settings and hit the build button. And then if you face issues, just go to player settings, Oculus, and then hit apply all for the fixes. And that should fix any issues you have with the build. Now that we're in the headset, we can see that our UI is functional. When we hover over an app icon, we see that the background and the icon come out a different amount, just like the Apple Vision Pro's UI. When we click on one of the apps, we smoothly transition into the app window. And once we hit the close button, we transition back into the main menu. If you liked this video or found it useful, don't forget to like and subscribe. And as always, let me know what video you'd like to see next. Thanks for watching.